uh, I'm at another uh, local local coffee shop all right I guess this is a coffee shop slash restaurant um, Maybe I'll turn the camera around so y'all can see it. Um, there's really nothing special about it. This is my first time here. Uh, this roof is retractable. Um, so at night or when the sun isn't out, like the sun is out right now, they will uh, retract the roof and you can look up in the night sky and you get fresh air and the whole thing. So that's what you're looking at. Uh, that's very common in Vietnam, uh, these kinds of retractable roofs. So let's get back into it. We're on page. Uh, we are on page. Ah, page 15. Okay, so now we're going to look at the evidence. We're going to look at the evidence regarding whether Mark in his prophecy concerning the Sea of Galilee, remember the storm, whether that was a prophecy fulfilled or whether it was Mark writing that story using the language and imagery found in Psalms chapter 107 verse 23 through 30. And scholars, you decide whether it is more probable that a deity, or, or even let's say the Most High, wrote more than 10 centuries, a thousand years in advance. This, uh, or not wrote, but prophesied. Prophesied this event that Mark wrote about. Okay, or is it more probable that Mark simply used the words and the images found in Psalms 107, verse 23 through 30. Now, I know uh, many of you religious people will say, oh, well, Dr. Yasaka doesn't have the spirit. He don't have the ruach. That's why he can't see it. My first response to that is, I'm looking at what's on the page. <clears throat> Simply, what is written in the documents? in English, not considering what's written in the uh, so-called original languages. No consideration of that. Most of y'all, 99.99% of you all cannot do that. Secondly, you clearly do not know what the Ruach is about which you speak and claim that I don't have simply because your viewpoint is different than mine. See, I could very well say, you don't know what you're talking about because you claim to have this Ruach. So I can say anything that you say right now is not true because you claim to have the Ruach. There's no proof. You can't prove it. That's point number one. Point number two, if you knew what the Ruach is, you wouldn't be sitting here claiming that you have it. So I'm trying to say you don't know what you're talking about in terms of fact, mythology, and the etymological meaning 
of what you're calling the Ruach. Okay, so in other words, in other words, let's just deal with what's written on the page. Okay, and don't accuse. You don't accuse me, I won't accuse you. Right? Let's just look at what's on the page, like gentle men and gentle women. All right? Don't make excuses, especially vague, ambiguous excuses. And don't try to scare people by talking about, I don't have the Ruach, that's why I don't understand. No, that's a fear, that is a fear tactic. That's a, a, a cultic fear tactic. Let's just deal with what's written on the page. Here we are on page 15. Who is the man with the water jar? Let me put that in the camera. Now y'all make sure y'all download the book. The link to the free PDF is in the description area of the video. If you come in after this live stream, make sure you download the PDF. Or if y'all able to see it, if you all are able to see and read the text, pause the video on the replay and read the text. Now I'm gonna read it out loud, but I want you to see it for yourself. I want you to see it for yourself. So let me pause for a minute or two. All right, so now let's get into it. So at issue here, again, before I read through it, at issue here is that whoever wrote Mark, whether it be one person or a team of writers, did they write the story about the storm on the Sea of Galilee using language and images from Psalms 107 of verses 23 through 30 or or is it more probable now remember anything is possible any and everything is possible so what's that what issue here is not what's possible but what is more or most probable or is it more probable that a deity your religious people will say the most high wrote a prophecy 1,000 years later, memorialized it as Psalms 107, verse 23 through 30, prophesying the future event of the apostles and the storm on the Sea of Galilee, which is most probable. Now let's get into this, all right? <clears throat> gonna start here with Psalms 107 23 through 30 which reads others went out on the sea in ships they were merchants on the mighty waters now let's backtrack who are known who are known to be merchants and seafarers these are Moors the ancient Phoenicians Y'all heard the express uh, the term uh, ancient Phoenician Hebrew? Paleo Hebrew, ancient Iberia. Others went out on the sea in ships. So we should already know. Or we should have in mind who? Phoenicians, Moors, Canaanites. All, it can be any of the Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, more. Okay? I hope everyone sees that. They were merchants. The Phoenicians were merchants, right? The Moors were merchants. Clear? They saw the works of the capital L-O-R-D. His wonderful deeds 
in the deep. So the deep would be the sea. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest. He spoke and caused a storm, y'all, that lifted the high waves. All right? So in other words, what happens? The deity spoke and the sea began to rise and fall in what we call waves. Waves. <clears throat> they mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. So these were huge waves. Huge waves. All right? Huge waves. In their peril, that's the peril of those who went out on ships, their courage melted away. So given that they were in the, these, uh, riding these high waves, extremely high waves, they became fearful. Why? Because their lives were in danger. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunken men. Why would that happen? Because the boat is going up and down and it's moving up and down, left to right. So they're staggering like they're drunk. Why? Their equilibrium is telling them what? Telling them to keep yourself balanced, right? Natural phenomena. So they're trying to keep themselves balanced or standing up or holding on to something so that they don't fall off into the sea and perish. So get that mental image in y'all's mind. These, the ship is going up and down, left and right, rocking back and forth, side to side, up and down. And the men are trying to hold themselves up. Right? And so they're being tossed and turned looks like they're walking around like drunk men they can't stand up straight have this mental picture in your head they reeled and staggered like drunken men they were at their wits end they didn't know what to do they were afraid they cried out to the capital lord in their trouble they started praying to an external deity that's the first problem they cried out to the L-O-R-D in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. So this external deity saved them, saved their lives. He, that is the capital L-O-R-D, he stilled the storm to a whisper. The storm stopped. Okay, so now... The sea is smooth again. So this external deity saved, saved the men in the ships. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it uh, grew calm. And he guided them to their desired haven. Y'all see that? In other words, this external deity saved them. Clear? Now, let's discuss this. Let's discuss this just a little bit more. They're on the sea. They went out in ships. They were carrying cargo, right? They were merchants on the mighty waters. All right? So they must have had cargo in their ships and the ships must have been pretty sizable or were they fishers? Was their cargo fishers and they were out on fishing ships catching fish, fish to sell fish? You decide. So let's see, when storms come, let's say it's uh, nighttime, it's dark. It's cold on the sea. The storms come. But when nighttime starts to give way to day 
time. In other words, the sun, here's the horizon. The sun is coming up over the horizon. Now we have sunrise. What's going to happen as the sun begins to rise? The sun gives forth its what? Its light rays of energy heating the atmosphere, heating up the atmosphere. What's going to happen when the sun begins to heat up the atmosphere? Well, the atmosphere is going to warm up and the sun will cause the storm to stop. It's a natural phenomena. Y'all see that? The, sun, the, uh, the storm goes away because the sun began to shine. It heated up the atmosphere and through natural principles, natural rules that govern storms, and here's the sun, it's rays warming up the atmosphere, the sun goes away, uh, the, the storm stops and the sea calms down. No more waves. Okay? That's a natural phenomenon. Now let's look at Mark. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 31. And let's compare what Mark wrote to Psalms 107. That day when the evening came, there we go, it's nighttime. It's getting cold, right? That day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, and just as he was in the boat. He is JC, and they are the apostles. And furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat. So now there's a storm in the sea. We see that also in Psalms 107, 23, verse 30, right? Now, isn't it interesting that in Psalms 107, it reads, others went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. Now, merchants, buyers and sellers, men who are out to make a profit, right? And this is paralleled in Mark 4, 35 through 41. JC, the Christ figure, and the apostles. JC said, I will teach you to be fishers of men. Remember that? Don't they collect tithes in Christianity? Y'all know where they got that concept from? Because farmers, this is the natural phenomena that has been remixed into what is now known as a tithe, 10% tithe in Christianity. The farmers would save 10% of their seeds. So they get their harvest and they would save 10% of their seeds so that they'd have seeds to plant next spring. Okay, and then the renegade Moors and their hybrid minions remixed that and demanded and began to demand a 10% tax on the people couched or hidden as a religious tithe. Okay, y'all? Is that clear? Christianity is in fact commerce. Let me repeat that. Christianity, religion, is commerce. 
It is commerce. All religion is commerce. Merchants. Let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat. So again, there's the storm. We have merchants. We have a storm. High waves. It's a furious squall. So real high waves. JC was in the stern of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. Now JC is sleeping on a cushion. Remember, the boat is going up and down, left and right. How could JC not be tossed back and forth without he himself being chained or in a box? No, he's just sleeping on a cushion. How is it that he's not being thrown to the left and to the right, being thrown up, down? How is he going to sleep through that? Okay? Use your logical mind. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Y'all see that? How could JC sleep through a violent storm that's making the boat rise and fall the boat is shifting from left to right up and down left to right probably at angles okay the apostles the disciples are being tossed through and through and fall but how is JC not being tossed or if he is being tossed, how is it that he manages to stay on the cushion and not be woken up by natural means, right? So imagine you're driving in the car. Just imagine, y'all. Driving in the car. And then all of a sudden, the driver, and you're asleep. Let's say you're asleep in the passenger seat, front or back. The driver hits on the brake. An immediate stop. Are you not going to wake up? Is that not going to wake you up? Or let's say the the driver uh, does a turn. The driver turns. Not a soft, smooth turn, but a right. That's not you know causes you to go. That's not going to wake you up. Or let's say the driver is going really, really slow and then punches the gas, and you go back. That's not going to wake you up. That's natural, right? Your equilibrium will notice a change in the motion. A deceleration, acceleration. All of a sudden you go this way, you go maybe you hit your head on the window. JC didn't hit his head on the floor or something else while he's sleeping on on a couch. Somehow JC doesn't wake up. That doesn't make sense, right? That's not logical, not possible. Some people may say, well, he was in the spirit. <laughs> so he didn't wake up because he, he, he has nothing to be afraid of. But do you see how illogical that is? Right? So clearly, clearly, clearly when you analyze this using your critical mind you should see that this is an allegory this is an allegorical story let's continue the disciples woke him so who is him that's the issue the disciples woke him and said to him teacher don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet. We saw the same thing in Psalms 107, right? Psalms 107 reads, 
They cried out to the capital L-O-R-D in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. The he is the capital L-O-R-D. Capital L-O-R-D, of course, in the Bible is the Tetragrammaton, right? The Tetragrammaton. The Tetra for gram as in grammar for the four letters aton or atin. The equivalent of the Kemetic or Egyptian deity aton or atin. Watch the video I did on that. All right. Watch the video that I did. Search search it on my uh, videos, live, my lives. I did a video on that. The four letters or four pictographs, the four grammars, the four pictographs, aton or atin, the tetragrammaton, all right? The equivalent of the Kemetic or Egyptian deity, atin or aton. Who is a trinity, right? With JC, the Christ figure and the so-called Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebu rebuked the wind, and said to the heavens, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. We see the same thing in Psalms 107, 23 through 30. I just read it. He said to his disciples, he is JC. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified. The seamen in Psalms 107 were also terrified. They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So we see the same exact story in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41 that we see in Psalms 107, verse 23 through 30. And, and keep in mind, scholars, that these solar deities, the Tetragrammaton, the Tetra, the Four, and then grammar, okay, the four letters, atin, A-T-I-N, A-T-O-N. J.C., the Christ figure, you see him with the halo, with the sun behind him? They're sun deities, solar deities. So that when you look at this, understanding that this is an allegorical story and J.C. the Christ figure that the Tetragrammaton that Aton or Aten are solar deities we come to understand remember it's evening that when the sun comes up above the horizon and it releases its sun rays or its sun rays enter the atmosphere, daytime, uh, nighttime transitions to day. And the sun's rays heats up the environment, heats up the atmosphere. And through natural phenomena, natural laws that govern weather, that govern storms, the waves calm down and the sea is calm no more storms why because the sun the light of the world the savior has returned causing night to transition into day is that clear scholars Is it clear? 
All right. So that concludes the subheading on the historical J.C. the Christ figure. So I hope everyone understood. Let me show it again. I hope everyone understands uh, Psalms 107, 23 through 30, and Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. I hope everyone uh, was able to comprehend and see that the writers of Mark copy that story from Psalms 107. In my opinion, it is not a prophecy. Uh, I know for a fact that J.C. the Christ figure <clears throat> The one who is discussed or who has given a biological, a biographical rather, a biographical history never lived on planet Earth. And that the entire promised land was a burning waste. So none of the events that are discussed in the gospel as happening, happening in the promised land could ever have existed. Okay, so I know for a fact that Mark, the Bible writers, writer or writers, simply lifted this story out of Psalms 107. Okay? Or if I want to be generous, they couch the story of the storm and the Sea of Galilee, they couched it using or in the language of Psalms 107, 23 through 30, however you want to say it. All right, so that concludes, that concludes uh, the historical Jesus subheading. All right, that concludes it. Our next subheading is Mark and Homer. Mark and Homer. So I think I will stop here. Just so we'll have uh, well-structured videos. I'll come back uh, sometime within the next uh, within the next 12 hours. And we'll begin Mark and Homer. Maybe even the next. Wait, 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 wait. So, so today is Saturday. I forgot. Today is Saturday, my time. Um. So ten o'clock tonight, my time will be ten o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. So. I teach a 506 The Curses course uh, every Saturday. Are y'all still there? Okay, so I teach the 506 The Curses course every Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I may not come back and do a video. I haven't decided. But definitely, y'all, uh, click the link. Uh, in the description area of this video so you can come to class. Click that link, register for the course. You're gonna get an email with the link that will allow you to enter the class. All right, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so you can Google search 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and convert it to, you, you can find out whatever time that is in your part of the world. All right, so for me, that's gonna be, what time is it? I don't know what time it is. So it's 11.20 in the morning here. So that's gonna be roughly in about, uh, uh, roughly in about 10 hours. Roro, Roro, Roro Amani writes, yep, I'll see you in the morning. Excellent, excellent. The link is in the description area of the video, y'all. Uh, so come, 
uh, come to the class. You're going to learn a lot. Um, and I see y'all there. I need to bounce. Islam to all the Moors and Shalawama. Support the project, y'all, to write the Book of the Law in ancient Ibriath and modern English. Let's put the natural phenomena back into the Book of the Law along with the natural law principles and concepts, all right? Uh, if you want to know what those are, I list them in the description area of this video, but that's, of course, that's not all of them. I just gave you some of them, but you'll get the seven hermetic uh, laws or principles and you'll get much more. Just check that out, okay? All right, Shalawama, y'all, and Islam.